8.4 vector equation of a plane. So now we moved on from lines to planes and I want you to think about a plane as like a sheet of paper in the diagram that I'm showing you. It's kind of a, you know a little set up like this. Now of course you could turn this plane in any direction in space that you want. There's so many an infinite number of planes. So what we need to define a plane as the vector equation, the next lesson will be the Cartesian equation. Now you should remember what the difference is between those two as well. Vector equation writes in terms of vectors and the Cartesian in terms of A, B, C and with planes D. That will be the next lesson. So when we want to define the plane, we need a point and we need two direction vectors. So looking at this schematic here, it says if P is on the plane, Oh, I didn't put a P on here. That's, oh no, it's right here. If P is on the plane, then we can write AP, so from A to P, as a linear combination of the two direction vectors, U and V. So AP is S times vector U plus T times vector V, where S and T is an element of real numbers. So if we look at O to P, O to P would be OA, plus AP, and as AP is already SU plus TV, we get this little equation here. So if I asked you to give me the vector equation of this plane up here, you would say, well, X, Y, and Z is equal to, so you list the point, minus 3, 4, 5, plus S times 6 minus 5, 1, plus t times minus 1, 3, 2, where s and t are elements of real numbers. Okay, so now you've got your vector equation. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? So you can imagine what we're going to be doing in this exercise is finding a second direction vector or, you know, maybe we have three points on a plane and we want the equation. So it's just little combinations of those and I'm sure you'll find this quite undifficult. Is that a word? It's not hard. Okay, so the parametric equations, by now I'm sure you're an ace at giving parametric equations. x equals minus 3 plus 6s minus t. So we're just pulling them off in order. And y would be equal to 4 minus 5s plus 3t. And of course, z would be 5 plus s plus 2t. And there you go. You've got parametric equations. Now what you should note, and I'll put a little note here, there are no, we don't have symmetric equations for planes. No symmetric equations because we have two variables. Because we have two unknowns, we'll say, or parameters, S and T. So remember with lines, we'd say, well, T is equal to this, this, and this, so that means they're all equal. <clears throat> well, we can't do that because we have S and T. So in general, if we have point A being A1, A2, A3, and the direction vectors, I'll let you just read that, then the vector equation of the plane will be the point plus a parameter times this direction vector and a parameter times the second direction vector. And there's your parametric equations. So that's just exactly what we did in pencil up here above. Okay, so let's move on to some examples of the type of questions that you're going to have to do. So we shall turn my lovely worksheet to the next one. And you can't see it, so I shall move it down. So it says, find the vector and parametric equations of the plane containing 1, 0, minus 3, B, C. Okay, determine if this point is on the plane. Okay, well, let's make up the direction or the uh, vector equation of the plane first. So we have three points. We have no vectors. So we need to find two vectors, two direction vectors for this plane. And we can do AB and 
AC or whatever combination you would like to do. Usually you just do, you know, A, B, A, C, just like that. Okay, so A, B is B minus A. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Minus 3 minus nothing is minus 3. And 1 minus minus 3 is 4. There's 1. The second one, we're going to do A, C. So 3 minus 1. The math is easy, isn't it? 5 take away 0. And minus 3 minus minus 3. Don't say minus 6. 0. Okay, so now I have two direction vectors. And if I want to give the equation of the plane, I can do that right away. So my two direction vectors. And I have a point. I can use a, any one of these points, but I'm going to use the point A. So I'm going to say x, y, z is equal to 1, 0, minus 3, plus s times 1, minus 3, and 4, plus t times 2, 5, zero s t elements of real numbers okay so i've written out the vector equation and now i want to give the parametric equations so that's x y and z so x is we'd say one plus s plus two t and y is going to be minus three s plus five t these are my parametric equations, and z is going to be minus 3 plus 4s. So these are my parametric equations. And you're halfway done here. Okay, so the next part, it's asking me whether or not is q 5, 7, 1, on the plane. Okay, so how am I going to go about doing that? Well, if you look at our equations here, this equation for z only has one parameter, s. So if I know what z is, in this case, 1, so z is equal to 1, so 1 minus 3, sorry, one, my, 1 equals minus 3 plus 4s. Bring it to the other side, and I would get 4 is equal to 4s. So that means that s is equal to 1. So I have one of the variables, and if I can find um, the other t value here, so I've got s and t, and then I can plug it into um, the third equation to figure out if this one is on the plane. So you, you check one or the other, right? So I need to know, is five, is five going to be equal to this? Is seven going to be equal to this? And is one equal to this? So first find one of them. So I have S is equal to one. So my second step is going to be, well, I'm going to say five is equal to one plus S plus two T. S is equal to 1, so 5 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 2t. I'm showing a lot of steps here so you don't get lost along the way. And that's because I have this S here. So 2, bring it over, that gives me 3 is equal to 2t. So t is equal to 3 over 2. Okay, so if S is 1 and T is 3 over 2, now I'm going to test, let's do part 4 here, or 3, I did 1, 2, 3, um, I'm going to check 7. So if Y, let's write out the equation for Y here, minus 3S plus 5T, and I have S is equal to 1 and T is equal to 3 halves. And Y is equal to 7 because that's the 7 from my Q value here. So I'm going to plug left side is equal to 7. And the right side is going to be equal to minus 3 times 1 plus 5 times 3 over 2. So that's minus 3 plus 15 halves. 
and 15 halves and minus three, that's going to give me nine halves, which is not equal to seven. So I would say left side is not equal to right side. Therefore, Q is not on the plane. Okay, so it's a simple matter of figuring out, solving for the variables. Um, you could pick any two, like even if I had S and T, I could have used, uh, let's say I used Y and Z, and I solved two equations and two unknowns, because I could plug, I could have plugged in Y is 7, Z is 1, and then solve for S and T. I would have got um, probably different answers, because this doesn't work. But then I would plug those in and see if I could get X. So it's your choice. Um, it makes it easier for marking if everyone does the same thing as a teacher. But, I mean, everyone always chose, chooses different ways of solving it. Okay, let's move on to this question here. It says, if pi is a plane, so you'll see this a lot, pi 1, pi 2, pi 3, is a plane with parametric equations. These are the parametric equations. Find the equation of a plane parallel to the above plane containing this point, one, two, three. So right, I, right away, I know that I'm going to start with x, y, z equals, I have a point, one, two, three. I need two direction vectors. Okay, so if this is parallel to this plane, then it has to have the same direction vectors, right? They have to be the same. So the question is, what are the direction vectors? Um, how can you read them from this? And I think you'd see right away, because you've done enough work with this already, that the coefficients of s give me one direction vector. So that would be, um, let's call that direction vector u. And that would be 3 minus 1 and 1. And I can pick up the other direction vector as well very easily by looking at the coefficients of t. If I get the pen top off. So I have 2, whoops, 2 minus 1 and minus 3. So vector v is going to be 2 minus 1 and minus 3. So all I have to do is plug those in here. 2 minus 1 minus 3. And I'll put this one in pink to make it really pretty for you. Don't you just love colorful lessons? There you go. So you found the equation of the plane parallel with another point. So remember parallel has to have the same direction vectors and you can use your own point. Okay, the next question says, determine the equation of a plane that contains the point A, 1, minus 5, 9, and the line, the line. So they give you a line, 1, 1, 1, plus, so I have one direction vector. Now remember, we need two direction vectors. We only have one. So we can find a second direction vector by using this point. Let's call this point P. So if I find AP, I can find a second direction vector. So find second direction vector, direction vector. So we'll call it vector AP. That's going to be P minus A. So one minus one is zero. Um, one minus minus five is six and 1 minus 9 is minus 8. And you could also simplify that by factoring out a 2. You don't have to, but this is a little neater format. Okay, so I have a point. So I'm just going to say that x, y, and z has to be equal to my point 1 minus 5, 9 plus s times the direction vector from the line plus the direction vector that I found using A and P. Isn't that easy? S and T are elements of real numbers. Okay, 
we're getting there. I think I only have one more sheet. Yes, I do. Okay, so this question asks you to find the y-intercept of the plane. So you know when you were doing lines, if you wanted to find an x-intercept, you set y to 0. And when you're trying to find the y-intercept, you set x to 0. But on a plane, if you're trying to find a y-intercept, you need to set x and z equal to 0. Right? That makes sense. So we're finding this intercept. So we're going to leave this equation alone. We want to find the y-intercept, but we need to know what s and t are. So I have um, one equation. I have x equals 1 minus s. And the y-intercept, if I set x and z equal to 0, that means for this equation that 0 is equal to 1 minus s and s is equal to 1. If I want to find the um, t parameter here, I'm going to set z equal to 0. So 0 equals 9 minus 4t and t is going to be equal to 9 over 4. Okay, so I know what s and t are, and now I can plug those into this equation, and that will give me the y-intercept. So now sub s and t into y equals minus 5 plus s plus 3t. And so that gives me 3 times 9 over 4. So minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4, and 3 times 9 quarters is 27 quarters. And minus 4 would be minus 16 quarters plus 27 quarters, and we find the y-intercept is 11 quarters. Y-intercept is 11 over 4. Okay, so that looked much more difficult than it was. And the only thing you had to understand there, and once you've seen it, I'm sure you get that if you set x and z to 0 and plug those values in here, you automatically find s and t. And then you just plug those in, and that gives you your y-intercept. You could have been asked for either of the, um, either of the intercepts, and that's how you would do it. And the last question I want to do for you is a question from the homework that my students had problems with over the years. So it's number 11 on page 460. And the question asks you to determine the equation of the plane that contains this point and this line. So I think they were a little confused because they realized that you have a direction vector. Direction vector. And you have a point, right? This is a point. There's no little arrow over it, so without an arrow, it's a point. So what you want to do first is you want to find another point. So step one, you're going to find another point first. And using that point and A, we can find a second direction vector. Okay? Okay, so let's find another point on this line. We can't find a point from this point, so this is the only place we have to go. So let's say, now this again, you have options, right? I'm just going to say let um, m equal, well I'm not going to put in 1 because that would give me the same. I'm going to say let m equal negative 1. So that will give me a point, therefore another point. Another point is, and we'll call it B, and all we're going to do is change the signs of the direction vector. So this is a point on this line. And now that I have the point, I'm going to find a vector AB, which will give me a second direction vector. So AB is B minus A, so minus 2 minus minus 2 is going to be 0, and then we have um, minus 1, 
and uh, minus 7, so we have 10. 0 minus 1, minus 10, sorry. Okay, so now I have two direction vectors and a point, and all you have to do now is write it out. Therefore, x, y, z equals, I get the point, minus 2, 2, 3, plus s times 0 minus 1 minus 10, and t times 2 minus 1 and 7. And there you go. There's your lesson on vector equations of planes. It's not very difficult, and I know that this is a point where, you know, you want to do really well, and, and this is a nice easy one for you to uh, pick up your grade with. So I hope that helped you. Leave some comments. Give me some thumbs up. We all like to be encouraged, don't we? And I hope you're all feeling well and healthy and enjoyed the lesson. Don't forget to subscribe.